This is the TED Health Podcast. I'm Dr. Shoshana Ungerleiter. Why are whispers, taps, crinkles, and clicks so relaxing for some people? Greg Richard is a physiologist, and today he's guiding us through Autonomous Sensory Meridian Response, or ASMR. He'll explain the light, sparkly brain tingles he and many others experience while listening to ASMR, like painter Bob Ross's soothing, calming voice. Then a hard pivot to noise pollution, which doesn't give us sparkly tingles, but could give us high blood pressure. I'm a bald man, (laughs) but I don't miss my hair. What I do miss is going to the hairdresser. I found it to be such an enjoyable and relaxing experience. I loved it when they would rub their fingers through my hair while they washed my hair in the sink. I enjoyed it when they walked me over to the chair and they would play with my hair some more and talk to me about different hairstyles and haircuts I could get. And I even enjoyed the gentle sound of the scissors, snip, 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 right next to my ears. I enjoyed it so much and I was so deeply relaxed that I remember many times I would just sit there and I'd think, I'd pay you even if you just pretended to cut my hair. (laughs) There's another moment also that often stimulates this deep relaxation for me. It's whenever I get an eye exam. (laughs) And I'm not talking about those puffs of air they blow into your eyeballs. That just makes my eyelids flutter thinking about it. But instead, it's when they bring out the wheels of lenses and they click through them all and they want to know which lens helps you see better one or two one or two and they say it in this very relaxing voice and there's something about that moment of personal attention and that soft voice that just deeply relaxes me. And it gives me these light, sparkly, pleasurable brain tingles. I enjoy it so much that as they click through each option, I want it to last a little bit longer. So when they ask me one or two, I say, oh, I'm not sure. (laughs) Another moment that often stimulates this deep form of relaxation is when I watch the TV show Bob Ross's Joy of Painting. I would come home from school, throw some pillows on the floor, lie down, and let that soft voice just sweep over me. And he had the nicest personality. He'd turn to the camera, he'd look right at me, and he'd say the kindest things like, there are no mistakes, just happy accidents. And then he'd turn back to his canvas and he'd make these gentle, relaxing sounds with his paintbrush. Tap, tap. Tap, tap, tap. And I found it so relaxing that I often fell asleep and never saw him finish the painting. In 2013, I learned that this special response has a special name. Autonomous Sensory Meridian Response. (laughs) or much more simply, ASMR. That is a complicated word. So it's a good thing we've got it simplified. Now, I'm a physiologist. I'm a researcher. I'm a data nerd. I was so excited to read about the science of ASMR. In 2013, there wasn't a single peer-reviewed research study. What I did find were plenty of forums Thousands and thousands of comments all across the internet discussing this blissful sensation. And they all reported the same response that I felt. They were deeply relaxed, they felt comforted, they felt calmed, and they had these light, sparkly brain tingles. And I also noticed that every scenario they described that stimulated their ASMR had a simple theme to it. It was always when they were receiving positive personal attention from a kind and caring individual. And the examples they gave were very similar to my moments. It was moments with hairdressers. It was moments with healthcare professionals. It was moments with teachers. They'd tell stories of the teacher from their childhood with the soft voice 
who would kneel down next to them and help them solve a math problem. It was moments with parents. It was moments with their best friends when they would whisper to each other in childhood, or they'd braid each other's hair, or they'd play that game where you just lightly with your finger draw letters on each other's backs and try to guess the letter. But the moment that Stimula ASMR that I saw the most often mentioned was watching the TV show, Bob Ross's Joy of Painting. <laughs> now we know Bob Ross was not trying to stimulate people's ASMR or cause them to relax. He was trying to teach you how to paint. But there are individuals today who are creating ASMR videos just for the purpose of relaxing their viewers and helping them to fall asleep more easily. They're called ASMR artists, and they have millions of followers. Some of them have more followers to their YouTube channel than Kim Kardashian has to her YouTube channel. And what are they doing in these videos? Well, very simply, they're sitting close to the camera, they're gazing into the lens, and they're speaking softly or they're whispering gently. They may even be pretending to be a hairdresser or pretending to be a healthcare professional or just speaking softly the way a close friend would to you. I recently published a brain scan study with Bryson Lochte and other researchers from Dartmouth College. And we saw that the brain regions that are activated while people are watching ASMR videos are the same brain regions that are activated when people are receiving positive personal attention from a kind and caring person in the real world. I've also collected data from over 30,000 participants as part of a research study with Carissa Burnett and Jennifer Allen. And Jennifer Allen is the woman who coined the term autonomous sensory meridian response in 2010. And what we see is that ASMR is experienced in over 130 different countries. And the people are reporting the same experience. They feel deeply relaxed. They have these special light brain tingles. And it's helping them to fall asleep more easily, and it's helping them to reduce their stress. Even individuals who are diagnosed with anxiety and insomnia are reporting benefits from watching these ASMR videos and experiencing ASMR. Other institutions are also publishing data about ASMR, and they're reporting similar health benefits. Now, there's plenty of unanswered questions still, like what might be the brain chemicals that are causing this amazing sensation? One likely candidate is the neurohormone oxytocin, and you might have heard of this as the love hormone. It's already well known that your oxytocin levels in your brain increase when anyone gives you positive personal attention in a kind and caring way. It's also already known that your oxytocin levels, when they increase, you'll feel relaxed, you'll feel calmed, you'll feel comforted. Another big question is why doesn't everyone experience ASMR? If you've never felt this experience, maybe you just haven't had the right real world encounter yet. Or maybe it's determined at birth. It could be determined by the sequence of your genes related to oxytocin or other brain chemicals. Another big question is how do these health benefits of ASMR compare to the widely reported health benefits of yoga, of mindfulness, of meditation? And how do these health benefits of ASMR compare to the therapeutic pros and cons of medications used to treat anxiety and insomnia? And lastly, will health professionals someday advocate ASMR as another tool in the toolbox to help people manage their stress and their sleeplessness? I don't have the answer to those questions, but I do know one thing. I know that my vision of a blissful heaven is Bob Ross greeting me at the pearly gates and asking me, Craig, would you like a haircut and an eye exam? <laughs>
loud planes, and constant construction can stress us out. Noise pollution is disturbing sounds in our environment. Think about things like construction, traffic, planes, large crowds, or even concerts. Even your phone can be a source of noise pollution. Imagine walking down a quiet street late at night, listening if someone is walking behind you, or listening for wild animals in the woods. Our brains are wired to continuously monitor our environment for sounds of danger, even when we don't realize it. Having constant noise around us boosts cortisol levels and triggers anxiety and stress. We can become irritable, edgy, frustrated, even angry. It can also make us tired, lose our concentration, and lose sleep. The most obvious health impact of excessive noise is hearing loss or a ringing in the ears known as tinnitus. But research also shows that noise pollution, even just short-term exposure, can temporarily increase blood pressure. And long-term exposure can contribute to cardiovascular disease like hypertension, heart attacks, and other kinds of heart disease. Noise pollution also harms children. It can impair their ability to communicate, to learn and concentrate. Noise pollution can also affect a child's behavior. This is a really big deal, but it's not a new problem. In 1972, the Noise Control Act was passed in the U.S. It aimed to protect people's health by establishing standards for noise emissions. But noise pollution has continued to rise globally. According to a 2011 report from the World Health Organization, noise pollution is now the second largest environmental cause of health problems in Europe, just after air pollution. Some areas have instituted policies aimed at reducing this noise. For example, the John Wayne Airport in Orange County, California, is one of the most noise-sensitive airports in the U.S. Planes are required to adhere to a noise abatement takeoff, and this means planes have to use less thrust when taking off, and a more shallow climb for much quieter takeoffs. And there's things we can do in our own homes and our lives to reduce noise too. Things like turning down the volume on our TVs and radios, soundproofing rooms, or setting automated timers to limit noisy air conditioners, heaters, fans, and other household appliances. You can also use earplugs or sound-canceling headphones when you know that you'll be around unavoidable noise. It may not be possible to escape noise altogether, but regularly scheduling quiet activities like reading, puzzles, or even meditation can help. You may even try listening to gentle natural sounds, the ASMR of nature, if you will. According to conservation biologist Rachel Buxton, natural sounds are an important resource. In her recent study, she found that participants who listened to the sounds of nature experienced lower stress, better mood, and increased cognitive performance. The sound of water was found to be the most effective at stimulating positive feelings, while bird noises were the most effective at reducing stress. Ultimately, it's about our awareness of noise pollution. And that's the first step to solving it. So listeners, how noisy is your daily life? And what can you do to turn the volume down? Thanks so much for listening today. This episode was produced by Transmitter Media and fact-checked by Ted. And special thanks to Anna Phelan, Sammy Case, Grace Rubenstein, Maria Lagis, and Colin Helms. I'm Dr. Shoshana Ungerleiter. Stay well, and I'll talk to you next week.